Hi, I'm Hash and welcome. We're gonna have some fun today. I'm gonna to be slapping paint on. I'm gonna be sloshing paint around. We're gonna be using luscious, vibrant colors and there'll even be a pinch of refined drawing. So sit back, relax and enjoy this feast for the eyes. Let's paint. Okay, we're gonna start off with this painting of a goldfish. Now, when you're starting out, it's quite scary looking at white canvas. So the first thing you wanna do is blitz it completely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just water down my brush a little bit. I'm going to use some Viridian Green with some Cadmium Yellow Deep and a little bit of white. And I'm using the flow formula so it's nice and smooth. Okay, so we'll get plenty of color on my two inch brush. And once it's filled up, we're ready to go. Now the good thing about using large brushes, it frees you up to produce lovely expressive brush strokes. Bit more Viridian Green and Cadmium Yellow. Doesn't matter if there's streaks coming through, it makes it a lot more interesting and we'll just cover up the last bit. So even before you start painting the scene properly, you've got all these interesting marks coming through. And I just need this base color to dry off for a couple of seconds. Okay, now the base color has dried, we can get into doing some painting. So we've got cadmium yellow medium, some lemon yellow, some crimson, and some processed magenta. I just wanna get loads of color on this brush and get it on the canvas straight away. Nice, large, expressive strokes. Drag the paint over the canvas, and you'll see the paint straight away streaking into some lovely shots of color. This is the beauty of mixing quite a few colors on one large brush. And the good thing about not doing too much drawing or any drawing at all, is that you feel a lot more liberated when you start to describe the shapes a little bit more. And I'm just gonna streak some red out from the main goldfish shape. And after that, I'm gonna start laying in some darks around these warm colors so we get a contrast of dark and cool color against warm color. Like I say, really good using big brushes because you get some lovely, lovely expressive strokes. Don't be afraid to do strokes edging out because you can always paint over it. That's the beauty of acrylic. Any mistakes you make, let it settle down and then paint over it again. Okay, let's use some dark color now, some purple, processed cyan, and just for good measure, we'll use a touch of Viridian Green. It's always good to streak in other colors just to make that shade a little bit more interesting, and we can streak that on as well. Just need a little bit more color there. Okay, and we'll just streak this in. This early stage is really about finding attractive layers of paint and color, so I'm less concerned about accuracy of drawing. Okay, and again, big brushes, luscious brush strokes, the heavy body is doing its job in leaving a couple of impasto brush strokes coming through. That's the other thing, when you use paint, it's quite a good idea to put larger amounts than you need because you really wanna explore how exciting using paint can be. If you use small amounts, it just disappears into nothing. You'll also be distracted by constantly filling up your palette. And I'm trying to find the shape a little bit more as I'm coming into the goldfish, but because the paint is so luscious and thick, you'll see it's streaking out itself. And the other thing about using such pure paint is you get a lovely glow, the purity of undiluted paint. Okay, we're coming into trickier areas here. So because we're coming into a warmer area, I'm just going to apply a little bit of processed magenta. So the color's a little bit more harmonious with the reds. There, and we'll just go in a little bit more around here. When you start using paint positively like this, you'll start to enjoy paint a lot more rather than detail. Okay, we'll just let this layer settle down and then I'll go in with more detail. Now we've let these initial layers dry off a little bit and we'll crack on with the finishing touches to this picture of a goldfish. At this point, I'm gonna do a little bit more detail, a little bit more definition. So I've gone down a brush size. This is a one inch brush. And what I'm going to do is use some lighter shades, including a little bit of white. Okay, so just a tiny bit of white with cadmium yellow deep and a little bit of lemon yellow. And I'm going to just brush this color over the top of the goldfish. And I'm just gonna streak these lighter shades. Again, not over mixing the color, just streaking them over so I get a lovely, fresh appearance to this paint. And around the face, which tends to be the focal point, I'm just going to do a little bit of definition, really to indicate where the eyes and a bit more structure to the head. Okay, just there and there. Just a couple of stronger shots of red for the underside of, of the fish. And for the top fin, I need a slightly stronger bit of red coming through. 
This is a three quarter brush and I'm gonna use some processed cyan with some heavy body white. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of processed magenta in it just to take the edge off the blue. And we're going to streak some of these colors in here and there, still fairly loose. Just adding a little bit of blue in there with some processed cyan really brings out the contrast. And we'll just indicate roughly just where the eye could go. At this point, it's all about really bringing out those highlights and those finishing defining marks. And again, down a brush size, plenty of white this time, save the strongest whites till the end. Just going to use some lemon yellow just to lift these highlights and there's a couple of sparkles of white coming through. Again, just some definition in the face and some stronger yellow at the back. And there's a strong highlight on this top fin and we'll just bring that out. Now if I reserve my strongest and most defining edges till the end, they make more of an impact. Okay, just lastly, I'm going to go back to my darks just to refine the edge of the face. And again, this requires some processed cyan, some viridian green and some mauve. And we're just going to slightly define the features a little bit more. Now, because the face again is the most important area, this is where I need to spend a little bit more time and everything else can really just soften off and diffuse to give a sense of movement. And that's just about it. There's always a couple more marks you need to do. So there we have it, just a quick exercise using heavy body paint and exploring the impasto nature of this lovely paint.